I was reading The Prosperous Coach on the way back from a trip from Italy, and I was in the middle of creating the curriculum for Stairway to Six, which is what we're closing out today. And I, and someone had given me your book and I was already doing, you know, over six figures as a coach, I was doing okay, but I knew it could be easier. And when I read what you had written in there, the thing about slowing it down, you know, I had been taught because you get kind of kicked out of coaching school and they don't teach you much of anything useful for how to find these clients. And one of the first things that struck me was something that you wrote that it wasn't about how do I get them? It was, how do I serve them? Because even the word get is so aggressive. Like, I don't want someone to come over and get me. It was, how do I serve this person? And when I read the part about an hour and a half to give an hour and a half of my time, it changed everything. I had been trying to get to know the person, really get them to pay me any level of money that they'd be willing to pay, sign the contract and move on to the next part of the relationship all in 30 minutes. And if you wouldn't do it in 30 minutes, then like you used to say, you're dead to me. And I didn't want to talk to you again. And I wasn't going to follow up. And that was it. And your book really changed everything. And then I went to ACS and those coaches that were there, I ended up working with, you know, Karen Davis and then Melissa Ford. And what happened for me in my business was it more than doubled. And it's because of what you're saying. We need someone to help us with the business of the business. And to really learn how to do it, because even though I'm a master through the ICF, it doesn't mean much if you don't know the other pieces. And so the things that I learned from you and that trickle down from the people that you've taught now what I'm teaching the other coaches has been a magnificent legacy that you've started and that, you know, those of us who've gone to your school and done those things have been able to help others with. Yeah, it gets, you're right. It gets passed down coach to coach. And it turns out to be a, a, a beautiful system. Um, at the beginning, it looks frightening because, uh, oh, now I have to pay a coach some money. Um, and it's hard to justify because I, I went to this school or I went to Byron Katie school or I went to USM or I did Landmark or I did 3P training or whatever, whatever um, source people went to to learn how to coach, um, the missing piece was always, okay, now how do I build a, a practice? And usually most people who are good at coaching and who love uh, psychology and spirituality and um, success systems and personal growth, they're not great at also loving business business is not their thing uh connecting with others helping others is more their thing so so they begin to think of the business part of coaching as the hard part that's the the necessary evil in this uh and so and and they're worried about spending money but actually um if you if you find a coach, and I recommend people look around, and, and if they can't afford a coach, peer coach with somebody. Um, a lot of coaches began by joining a group like this and finding someone in the group, and will you peer coach with me for a while until I get my practice up and running? And um, that that was the fastest track to making money, is have someone coach me on how to do it and if I had a, a sales conversation or an enrollment conversation that didn't go well, uh, I could take that to my coach and say, here's what I said, here's what they said. And he would role play with me and say, okay, uh, let, let's do that conversation over again. Not that you did anything wrong, but let's see if we can look at a different way of doing it. And then he would be me and I'd be the client. And I would see all kinds of ways I could have talked to my prospective client that he knew about from his experience uh, that I didn't even know. So, so it's a great way to learn. It, it really is, you know, and one other thing on this too, can you talk about the art of slowing down and what that means? Yeah, uh, it's a hard one because most people, when they hear that phrase, that's the last thing they want to do. I'm behind. So 
if I feel like I'm behind, I'm falling behind in my progress, I have payments due, I have so much time to really check this profession out to see if I can um, make a sustainable living as a coach, and someone tells me to slow down, that sounds like the opposite of what I want to do. I want you to speed me up. But the problem with um, speeding up is it, it makes it harder to listen to another person. If I'm, if I'm always trying to get into my future and trying to get them into my future, and I'm always thinking, uh, I'm thinking too fast and I'm caught up in my thinking and I can't really hear, and they might have revealed a couple of things in the conversation that if I had really heard it, uh, I could go there with them and I would find a way to help them that they'd be glad to pay for, but I'm just speeding, I'm going too fast. And, and part of going too fast is like you said, um, I'm only giving them a little bit of my time and then I'm moving on and giving someone else a little, and I'm, I'm, my coach called it playing tag. You're running around tagging people but you're not really developing a relationship with any one of them. And if you would slow down and look at the opportunity you have with people and really take your time before a session, he said, if somebody's going to talk to you about coaching, what do you know about them? And have you gone to their website? Have you read, seen them on social media? Um, do you read their blogs? Do you understand their world? And then uh, he, would, he would tell me, leave space to slow down and slow down after the session. So you can write a nice reflective email to that person about the session you've just had. And... Um, you can explain the possibilities you see for them. And you can say, I see what's possible for you based on our talk, whether you work with me or not. And, um, and that, that would create a better relationship rather than me speeding around trying to get out ahead of my own evolution. You know, it's so funny when I, I laugh, when I think of how I started and how a lot of us start, if they didn't want to sign up with me in 30 minutes, there was no reflective email and I already forgot them and I didn't prepare to see them and I could talk people into paying me money that I didn't even want to work with and who were not good fits for coaching. And so for some of us, we do have the skill of sales, but not everyone needs to be coached by you, by me type of thing. And so I had a lot of learning to do with personality fits and what is coaching and how can I really serve instead of I'm going to get a client, I'm going to do it quick. 